Today we will learn a few things to help with getting better scans. These are the settings I use, just the basic settings. I am going to be scanning this backing plate for a turbo compressor. It's aluminum, which is not the best thing for scanning, which is what makes it a great item to scan and show you the difficulties you may encounter. Right here, I'm adjusting the gain or the exposure. If you crank the exposure all the way up, you can see how you can see more of it in the scanning preview. But at the same time, in the little window, everything looks like overexposed and blown out. If the item is overexposed when you scan, the final product will have a fuzziness to the outside surface. So it's best to lower the gain down to a reasonable amount. Looks about good right here. I'll go ahead and start the scanning. You can see that the scanner is picking it up, but at the same time, you start to see that everything is spiraling. This means that it's not tracking it as it should. It does not say that tracking has been lost because it has not lost the tracking. It simply doesn't know how the item is moving, so it's duplicating itself. And as you can see, it's still just spiraling and spiraling around. So I'll just go ahead and stop it. As you can see, it looks like a mess. It didn't really capture as it should have. I will go ahead and fuse the point cloud. A lot of times when you fuse it, the points will group together and it will come out looking a lot better. Okay, it finished, and as you can see, it's a little sharper, but it's still off. The little notch that's right there at the top is just spiraled around. It's simply not a usable scan for what I need it for. So I'll just go ahead and delete the data and start a new scan. This time, I'll add an item for tracking. I simply grabbed this plastic spoon that I had and just laid it next to it fairly close. So what's supposed to happen this time is the spoon should help with tracking. As you can see, it's already looking a little bit better. It's not spiraling as much as it was before. And you see it kind of seemed like it glitched a little bit. What happened there is it lost tracking because the spoon went on the back side. It was not able to see it, so it was not able to track it. And as you can see where it kind of jumped a little bit, same thing. It simply didn't know the position of the item. So I went ahead and stopped it. Doesn't look too bad, but not perfect. Same process, go ahead and fuse it to see if it got any better. And this is the finished fuse. As you can see, it looks a lot better, but it is missing a lot of the details. You can see where it looks like the little notch, like it kind of duplicated just a little bit too much. By far it is not a perfect scan. So we want to get it scanned good. I'll delete this data, start again. This time I'm going to spray it with some scanning spray. That way the item will be seen a lot better than the raw aluminum. Okay I placed it back. As you can see a lot of the red. That means that it's overexposed now. So you have to drop the exposure back down. Generally, when I scan an item, I like for it to be under three. So one, two, or three is normally the best. I'm going to go ahead and start the scan again. 
as you can see nice and smooth everything's being displayed and we're coming around the back side again as you can see the scan kind of jumps a little bit and now everything slid off and it's the same reason this is happening is it's trying to track it but it's losing the position of the spoon and it's just simply not knowing where everything is so I'll go ahead and stop this then I'm gonna go ahead and mesh it not mesh it to fuse the point cloud just to see if it gets any better okay that finished and as you can see it did not fix it it's still looking like a mess so at this point you're probably going crazy saying the scanner doesn't work saying that you added item saying that you sprayed it all sorts of things but we'll delete this and i'll show you exactly how you should track this and how you should scan this right here i'm adding these little markers i'll put the link in the description all they are is a pyramid that has little spots for markers on them I actually didn't put markers on these I just use these as a reference and so I print them in white since white is a fairly easy color for the scanner to see we'll go ahead and start this scan here So as you can see it's tracking everything looks nice and smooth now it did right there have a small shift which I believe is just the software it tries to keep everything centered and a lot of time it'll shift things over a little bit but normally once you fuse the points everything lines back up So a lot of times, if your scanning preview is not looking good, just go ahead and finish the scan, or stop it, and then fuse the point cloud, check to see how it looks. Alright, stopped it right here, made it all the way around. As mentioned, things look a little shifted. But once we fuse the points, we'll see how it comes out. And here we go, the points are fused, and it already looks pretty good. Things are looking nice and smooth. Things are in place, there's no duplicates. So I'll go ahead and mesh the model. This is where you get your STL or your .PLY file. and it finish and here you go it's a nice clean and smooth model now it does have the markers on it so now I'm gonna show you how to clean those up to remove those from the scan just export your model you can export as STL or PLY I chose the PLY for this Just when you import it into Revel Studio, make sure that you grab the mesh.ply file and not the fuse. The fuse file is just the point clouds. So here I just leveled it to the viewing angle that I need it because I'm going to try to just chop up the plane to remove everything that's below the plate. So you can click the clip tool, which makes a plane. You'd right click and then drag to make your plane
All right, once you release, you'll end up with the plane, this blue plane here. You can click it with the left mouse and move it up or down if you need to set it a little bit higher or lower. I'm just going to set it about here so it gets rid of the markers. Click Apply. And now those little markers are gone. It still needs a little cleanup. There's a little smudge right here. This is probably where one of the markers was too close to it. So I'll just grab the lasso tool and go ahead and get rid of it. The little checkbox that I clicked was so that it would select all the parts and not only the faces that are being shown. Okay, delete it. Now there's still holes in the model. The entire back has a hole because I chopped off the marker part. So we'll go over to fill the holes. Do the hole fill, detect holes, it shows you where all the holes are. Then you have options to fill flat or to fill a triangulate, which basically just fills it in a triangle fashion. And here it's filled. The bottom's a little rough because it fills flat the best it can, but sometimes the back of the model is not completely flat when you chop it. I'll export it out as an STL. That way you can load into another software for processing or if you need to 3D print it. Here I loaded it into Prusa Slicer. I'm simply going to rotate it the way that I need it to. And then I'm going to chop the back off again. This way it's just a little bit smoother. But pretty much this is all you have to do. You get a nice clean scan. You can import this into a CAD software and rebuild it or whatever you want to do with it. 3D print it. But stay tuned for the other videos. I'll show you how to scan the front side and back side of this. Well, thank you for watching.